Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Today I am bringing you some French country inspired spring DIYs. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. So I created these two free printables. They'll be down below in my description box. The top one says Summer Vibes and the bottom one says Spring Air, both in French because we're doing French country today. And the Hobby Lobby sign for $1.19. My Hobby Lobby has an abundance of signs and it's definitely my to go to first before the Dollar Tree now because you're getting better quality for less money. I mean, even if you spend a little bit more money, the quality is so much better that it's worth spending that extra 50 cents. So I stop there first now just to check it out before I head to the Dollar Tree. I thought that the sign looked really cute in gray and white. And you know, that's kind of, I, I liked the gray and I liked the little white trim. I thought it already had a French look to it and I chose cardstock so it would cover the words and I go ahead and use the glue stick from the Dollar Tree. I wasn't sure that was gonna work but it worked brilliantly. You definitely do not need to spend a lot of money on glue sticks, you guys. I'm not getting promoted or any kind of um, you know, financial kickback from the Dollar Tree for talking about their glue sticks but it really is a great deal and my son bless his heart he I told him I needed some more glue sticks and he came back with like 35 packages so I I have enough glue sticks but I really like their glue sticks so as I'm working on it and I wanted to distress the edges with some of the antiquing wax as you can see it's just well at least in my opinion it's not really going together I don't like it so I decide to give it a coat of my white chalk paint I end up giving it two coats and it's takes me forever because obviously it's really awkward there's lots of different little lines but it totally comes out beautiful it was worth it and because I had to do it in a way where I didn't do the straight brush strokes back and forth it came out more naturally distressed which is my look so I love that obviously if you guys make a sign that's similar you're gonna go ahead and need to paint it white first but I go ahead and give it two coats of white chalk paint and by the way it's my homemade white chalk paint and if you need to know what that recipe is, there'll be a link down below in my description box. Now here where the areas were a little tricky, I use a white chalk pen. And then because that gets a little tricky, I take the walnut furniture pen from the Dollar Tree and just kind of try and give the brown, you know, I make those little, the previously white design brown and just try and clean it up so it has cleaner edges. And then I go ahead and edge it with brown on the edge thinking, oh, it'll all blend in, but it doesn't. I think, no, it doesn't look good. So I end up choosing the black furniture pen. The Dollar Tree furniture pens come in three colors. Black is one of them. And I end up deciding to go ahead and edge everything in the black furniture pen so it ties in with that black little metal uh, frame there and I also touch up the frame where I got white paint anywhere or where it's chipped with the pen as well and it ends up tying it in beautifully it looks so cute but it definitely was you know one of those DIYs where I changed my mind in the middle of it and it turned out good but I think it's super cute let me know what you think this next DIY I found this bunny template online it'll be a free printable and I went ahead and I just traced it off of my TV screen because I wanted it extra big so I need two pieces of computer paper as you can see and this is definitely a cardboard craft here because we're gonna cover it completely so there's no reason to use wood unless you want to use wood for the weight but I just you know whenever I can substitute it with a nice quality piece of heavy cardboard if it's covered I do so I just go ahead cut it out trace it now this is by no means a new DIY I've seen these before and I think they're so cute and believe it or not I don't have one and I want one so I thought this was a great opportunity to make one I'm making it a lot bigger than what the Dollar Tree bunny is this is very similar to the Dollar Tree bunny wooden bunny rabbit that they bring out at Easter time but he's a lot smaller I wanted this guy to take up pretty much the full you know, uh, this is the Dollar Tree microfiber cloth you find in the automobile section, and I wanted him to take up 
almost all of it. So he's really big. He sits about, I think he's about 13 and a half inches high. Well, if you get the microfiber cloth, you can kind of tell how big he is because it's that's a big cloth. You can make a pillow out of it. So I use my handy dandy little Dollar Tree glue stick and I cake it on and I glue one side down and then I put the you know more glue on the other side and then fold it as you can see and I glue the other side down now here's what I would do differently and I recommend you do it the way I'm gonna tell you to do it now especially if you don't have sharp scissors I would glue one side down first and then cut it and then glue the other side down because I had a heck of a time. I had to keep switching scissors, cutting it because the material is so, so thick. This is actually one of their better quality items, this microfiber cloth. It's really, really thick and not easy to cut when it's doubled layered. So as you can see, I end up just cutting it a little bit at a time and then gluing the two edges together to form a seam so we cover the cardboard completely. But again, I would do that separately. So we're always wiser in hindsight but it still came up totally totally cute and we're finally all done here so here's my little this is a um, pom-pom that my daughter bought from one of the craft stores to be Tinkerbell one year I used it in another DIY in a previous spring video and I thought it would make a super cute tail for this bunny now this is the back of the bunny but I don't know about you guys I had a dog once and when he got shampooed they would tie a bow on him and they put it on the back of his neck so bows do go on the back I kind of put it on the side so that way it can be interpreted as being either on the side of the neck or possibly in the front showing from the side but I just think the bunny looks so much cuter with a bow I just think you know if you if you don't like it with a bow leave the bow out do what makes you happy I just really like that extra decor I think it looks super cute and I chose ribbon uh, that's Hobby Lobby ribbon right there that kind of pulls off the French country look I'm going for. Now because he's all white I decide to take some of that antiquing wax and just dirty up his tail just a little bit. You know how bunny tails kind of have that cute look sometimes where they're kind of brown and white a little bit? Anyway he comes up so so cute and he was simple to do and I've always wanted one so I love this guy. Here's another great deal, Hobby Lobby. This is $1.59, but again, it measures about 18 inches wide and I believe, or long, it's about 18 inches long and probably be about hmm, seven and a half inches wide. So just really, really, really worth $1.59. So I took these little Dollar Tree bunnies and I filled in the holes at the top and I'm just sanding them nice and flat. And all I did was use their lightweight spackling. And now I decided to go ahead and paint the inside of the sign. I didn't want to use the back of the sign on this one. I wanted to use the actual front. So I do a really nice thick coat of my homemade chalk paint. I only need one coat because the chalk paint is absolutely fantastic. It covers in one coat. And then where I couldn't avoid getting some little extra paint on the inside, I just use that black furniture marker and touch that up. So here's some Dollar Tree napkins. I rarely see flowered napkins at the Dollar Tree, but this year they had them. I was so excited. So I went ahead and grabbed them. I always think flowered napkins tend to kind of, unless it's like maybe daisies or something, but if they've got any kind of pink in them like this, they just tend to kind of lend themselves to that French country look. I did some beautiful spring and Easter DIYs last year using some flowered napkins and I got really lucky and found these at the Dollar Tree. Now the other napkins I used last year, I found them at the 99 cent store and other places that you guys maybe won't necessarily come across. So this is good news. I found these recently at the Dollar Tree. So if you wanna go and grab them, you can. And as you saw, I pulled it apart, went ahead to use my glue stick, glued them down, cut off the excess, and then used a nail file. That's a great trick for getting in those tight areas where you can't get in with a big sand block. And then I just glued some little black bows down with Dollar Tree ribbon. Now I just kept it pink and black here to go with the theme because I think that's also very French. It's very Paris. And I'm picking ribbon. Again, doll, uh, this is Hobby Lobby ribbon actually. 
that I think also kind of goes with a French look or a Paris look and I'm adding some of the black in there to tie it in with the little black bows that one was hard to spread out so I had to tack it down with some hot glue if you want to know how I make my bows I made a video on every single bow I make in videos so that you can go and refer to that so that I didn't have to do it in every single video but that I believe is called a three loop bow and it's time stamped so you just look for that little time stamp and you'll be able to click on it will take you right to that bow so I added some pink flowers and then I was playing around with some lavender let me know if I should have added the lavender I decided to take it out because I thought it was a little overkill and it hid the ribbon too much but I'd like to know what you guys think anyway I love this Now here's a cute one I found and it was only 69 cents at Hobby Lobby and it's just toothbrushes in a cup. I just thought it was kind of ugly but what I saw instantly or maybe it's because it was Easter time was a bunny. So I found this free printable online and I'm going to go ahead and print that up for you and I went ahead and printed it up on regular computer paper and I'm speeding this up. You can slow it down if you want to but I go around and cut really carefully and slowly around each whisker because I wanted his little whiskers to bend around the edges of this. I just thought that would add extra cuteness and 3D effect. So I really, really took my time to cut this guy out and it worked. So there he is, he's all cut out. I'm gonna place him down just to kind of get a feel for where I want to put him. And I decide to go a little higher up because I have an idea for the bottom. And again, I'm just gonna use my Dollar Tree glue stick. And I like to glue the first half of the image with a glue stick and then kind of get it placed and then glue the other half because I like to use my hand to hold it in place so that it doesn't move. And here I'm just gluing his little whiskers around the side like I talked about. I just think that looks so, so cute. And also during this video, you're gonna see pictures really briefly of rooms. That's actually French country decor in different styles and that's kind of the imagery I had in my mind when I created the craft to give you different ideas on how and what themes this kind of decor would go with. For this particular little guy, I just kept thinking Beatrice Potter and I decided to choose a French cottage and just with spring flowers in the back because he's a buddy and he's got to be in the flowers. But anyway, I take some of the apple barrel paint in gray, distress the edges, a little bit in green mixed with gray to give him some grass because he's sitting in the grass. I don't know if I should have gone higher with the grass. My my family said no. Let me know what you think. I'd like to hear some feedback on that one, but I love this guy. What you see here are some scoops from Baby Formula that I saved from some previous DIYs because I knew what I wanted to do with them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the little handle off using some wire cutters. I get it as flat as I can, and then I use some cuticle cutters. Those are a great tool for crafting, by the way, when you need to get into tiny areas. Some little cuticle clippers I cut down more and then I take the sanding block from the Dollar Tree and sand it completely flat and you can you literally cannot tell there was ever a handle there and then I choose to go around and kind of sand the entire thing because we are going to be painting these and I want the surface to you know the paint to adhere to the surface so we're roughing it up a little bit and we're giving it a coat of my chalk paint I mentioned this in a lot of videos but I use the container from the folk art chalk paint to store my chalk paint in because I'm trying to recycle and use everything I have right now so I'm just painting all of them with the chalk paint but I always point that out because that's I did have the folklore chalk paint though that is really good chalk paint but that's my homemade one in the jar right now so I got these off of Amazon. There'll be a link down below. They're only like $10 and they're absolutely fabulous. They're 100% silicone molds. And I think they're meant for air dry clay, but I'm being like super thrifty and I'm gonna go for it with hot glue. And fingers crossed, I honestly did not know if this was gonna work and it does. And there we have it right there, a beautiful mold. 
and I go ahead and make one of those. Now I'm one of those crafters, I changed my mind a lot and I encourage you all to do this because that's part of the fun of creating is to be able to change your mind but I end up going with this mold instead because I decide that longer one isn't gonna look good for what I need and I make a total of four. And you also saw me use those cuticle clippers to clean up the edges, they're a great tool for that. Now this is a sign I found at Ross. Again, we're looking to beat the Dollar Tree now because they're raising their prices and I think you can do better elsewhere. So that was 99 cents. Here's a free printable that's gonna be off of a blog that I'll leave the link for down below. And I want it big so that it covers my full tray and I go ahead and I do it on the tissue paper that simple gift tissue paper that I taped to cardstock and put it through my printer it's something I've shown in quite a few videos now at the moment it's my favorite way to transfer because it's very inconspicuous and super easy to do and you know pretty much anyone can participate if you have a printer you can put it through and print this and it will print up. And I'm just using the cheapest inkjet printer I found at Walmart and it works just fine. So don't go spend a lot of money on a printer. You don't really need a lot of, you know, you don't need a fancy printer for this method. So as you can see, I'm using my glue stick. I'm taking my time because we're matching all the seams up and you'll see in a minute how you can't even see the seams with tissue paper. It's absolutely fantastic. If you take your time and you don't overlap, you literally, I mean, it looks like one piece of, it just looks like one print. So here are some little wooden dowels. These are actually the handles off of the sponges that I use from the Dollar Tree to paint with. When I throw those away, I keep the wooden part because they make great little pieces for DIYs. So <laughs> I have like hot glue on it I'm picking off there, but I just use a baby wipe, some of the folk art antique wax, and we're staining those. And now once those are fully dry, I go ahead and give it a coat of gray paint. It doesn't really matter what gray paint you choose, whatever gray paint you think looks like metal would work. The real magic happens is when I use this one. It's from Folk Art, it's a metallic sterling silver. A lot of people ask me about this one because I use it for my galvanizing. I mean, that is the magic right there. Now, I didn't shake it enough, I don't think, so some of the iridescence wasn't quite coming out as strong as it should have been. You really need to stir this up. I actually recommend storing it upside down. It works better that way. Otherwise, all of the little, whatever the chemical is or substances or ingredient is, whatever it is that makes it look metallic, kind of floats to the bottom. So I give it a good dry because we're using Nutmeg now from Apple Barrel Paint. That is my absolute number one favorite color for faux rust. It's a pretty much, you don't need to do anything to it color, and it works great for rust or just making things look antiqued. I know some people might wanna go full out there and add some cinnamon to have it that look. I didn't want that because this is actually gonna to go to my daughter-in-law and she was kinda of telling me what she wanted. She's gonna be using it in her kitchen. She loves the way this came out. So I'm using the Gorilla Super Glue and some hot glue to glue those little faux legs down and that gives it a permanent hold. And while it's drying, I'm gently taking a baby wipe and I'm gonna stain around the paper. Now the reason I do this afterwards is because the tissue paper is transparent and it'll, at least for me, I didn't want the print to be that dark. You will see the brown through it, so you gotta kinda do this at the end. And I also like to go around on the tissue paper a little bit because it helps blend the paper into the wood and make it look even more like a print. And now I'm just taking the Dollar Tree sponge and some of that antique wax, and I'm gently brushing it on the little legs so that they match. And I'm also using the sponge, the little beveled edge there to do the edges of this wooden piece as well. And this sign is really huge too. This is another one of those big, huge trays. I think my daughter-in-law is planning on using it to either put coffee mugs on in her kitchen or possibly fruit, like bananas or something. She just loves it. She just said, I'm, she goes, ooh. I want that one, I'm taking that one. <laughs> so, you know, her maiden name is actually French, so maybe that has something to do with it, but she instantly loved this. So I'm gonna go ahead and, as you saw, glue those four little pieces I made down in the corner that gives it that final French look. And then I'm taking those two little dowels there and I'm gonna glue some handles on it so you can pick this tray up by some handles. Now, I put them side by side too at the top there and I thought that also looked nice and I can always add or change. I want to know what you thought. I, my daughter-in-law, I think kind of liked, 
I think she was thinking it might look better with the two sticks side by side, like a frame at the bottom or a border. I'm not sure. But again, I love your feedback. Reading the comments is the, for me anyway, it's my favorite part of doing YouTube. So now I'm just taking some of that black marker from the Dollar Tree, using it to hide the hot glue, and that's it. We're all done. And I absolutely love this one. <music> I know I'm probably going to get some questions about this. I do seal this with poly acrylic. Once poly acrylic is dry, it's a clear varnish, it is food safe. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, comment. I love to read your comments. And until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.